have breaking news tonight. The manhunt for a triple murder suspect and his alleged accomplice is over. Billy Boyette Jr. is dead and Mary Rice is in custody. Police tracked the couple to a motel in West Point, Georgia, where Boyette killed himself and police arrested Rice. News 5's Debbie Williams joins us now live from West Point, Georgia, where it all went down this evening. Debbie. Roseanne, it's, it's amazing that this thing has ended after a weeks of searching for them. Billy Boyette, Mary is dead. Mary Rice is in custody. And it all happened here. I'm going to step out of the picture and let you see the hotel. You can see the, the crime scene tape around that motel room. And if you look over to the left, you'll see that white car. That's the Chevy Cobalt that was taken from the Beulah residence just yesterday. Just talked to the sheriff just a moment ago, James Woodruff, and, and he told us that Mary Rice actually checked into this motel yesterday, last night, and that someone recognized the vehicle and called police. And that's that whole see it, you say it kind of stuff. And, and then they surrounded this, confirmed that it was Billy Boyette and Mary Rice in that hotel room. They contacted the, the Georgia State Police and their SWAT team and the U.S. Marshals right when they were about to make entry into that motel room, Mary Rice came out and surrendered. A short time later, a gunshot, and Billy Boyette allegedly had killed himself. So that's where we stand right now. Brennan Ray is our associate from the Columbus station, WRBL, and has been talking to us through all this live coverage. She has also been here uh, for the three and three and a half, four hour standoff that happened here. Brent, how did you first find out about this and, and what are your thoughts now that it's over? Um, so we are in Columbus about 30, 50 minutes away. One of our morning anchors is uh, uh, knows Sheriff James Woodruff, so he uh, they got in contact, they tipped us off. Uh, originally, we weren't allowed up here. We were down, I believe it was a utility building down the street, I'd say about a mile, mile and a half from here. Um, and then they, they called us together and said, hey, here's the update. Um, and then they, they got us back up here. And we've been up here for, I guess it ended around six our time, so five, five your time. Right. So it was about a three and a half, three hour standoff is what we're, and they, they called it a standoff because they weren't coming out is what they said. And, and he even said that at, at one point they were opening the cur curtains and waving uh, I said, is that a, a form of taunting? And he said he's not going to speculate, but essentially, yes, that could be. Uh, he did say that Mary Rice looked very shaken, visibly shaken, when she did come out of the hotel room. And then it was, like you said, after that, that uh, they did hear a single gunshot in the hotel room. Was the Boyette case, was this case on y'all's radar at all this far north? Yes, we had been we had been keeping it on, on update, especially in our earlier shows with the regional. Um, so we were definitely very aware of that, and it, it was on our radar. Very good. Thank you so much for your help and your coverage throughout this. Mary Rice now in the custody of the Troop County Sheriff's Office. She was checked out by EMS. No apparent injuries. She will be held in the Troop County Jail until extradition proceedings. And we understand once those proceedings are complete that she will be coming to Alabama to be prosecuted first. Talking to State's Attorney Bill Edmonds this afternoon in Florida, he said that capital murder charge that she faces in the Lillian murder would trump any charges they have to get her first. We are reporting live in West Point, Georgia. Debbie Williams, News 5. And thank you very much, Debbie. Alicia Greer is one of the women Boyette is accused of killing in a motel room in Milton, Florida. Yesterday, we talked to Greer's father. News 5's Haley Minogue has been in touch with Wayne Lane since Boyette has apparently killed himself. She joins us now with more. Haley? Mel, that's right. That crime spree allegedly began a week ago in Santa Rosa County. And then, like you said yesterday, I was able to talk to Alicia Greer's father just about his reactions to the manhunt. I'm joining him now with his sister and his brother-in-law as well. Now, Wayne, if you would just kind of start off by telling me, what's, what's your initial reaction to hearing that, that this man was first cornered in Georgia and then was later um, died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound? Well, when we first heard that he was cornered up, we'd heard so many false reports back and forth that was like, okay, here we go again. As a matter of fact, we were on the way out the door to talk to another reporter, and we heard three different reports that we were going three different directions, and it was like, we're just going to sit here and watch the news and see what's going on. And, uh, and then we decided, okay, this sounds legit, so we're, we, we got on the road. 
not going there, obviously. But uh, and then when we found out, actually found out on camera with another reporter that he had taken his own life, and the first thing was relief. Uh, number one, that no one else was hurt. Uh, number two, that my my family doesn't have to go through months of sitting behind this gentleman in a court of law, listening to a bunch of back and forth, why he did it, why he shouldn't be, you know, tried. Was he on drugs? Was, you know, who was at fault? So relief would be the number one word, I think. Mm -hmm. And just, I know yesterday we talked about this as well, but just your reaction to law enforcement and their dedication and the community mm -hmm. really rallying behind, you mm -hmm. know, everyone in this situation. Yeah, the, the support and the outpouring of everybody, most, every, we've had thousands and thousands of people on Facebook and 99.9% .9 of that's been positive. Um, as far as the uh, law enforcement community here, uh, Alabama, Georgia, uh, I just like to thank uh, everybody involved for not only myself, but for Alicia and for the family members of my own and for the other victims. Thank you very, very much. I know everybody. I've, I've spoken to many of you and especially my lead detective up in Santa Rosa County. I've talked to him numerous times uh, and he was very quick to pick up the phone. Hey, I don't have much time to talk, but he would always get back to me and tell me, you know, uh, oh, Mr. Lane, I'm working on it. I can't tell you anything at this point, obviously, but he would get back to me. I'm working on it. So I know y'all were putting in 18, 20 hour days. You spent a lot of time away from your families to give peace of mind to our family. So thank you very much. I appreciate that a lot. Mm -hmm. And just going forward from this moment, what um, what is the plan for your family, your family, and what what do you want people to remember about Alicia? She was a she was a good kid. <laughs> she was a goofy kid. We're a crazy family. Um, Tomorrow, it, we're not having a, a funeral. We're not having a memorial service. We're having a celebration of Alicia's life. Um, I have, there's 10 of us in my family, nine brothers and sisters of my own, 10 kids, 10 family members, 10 brothers and sisters, 16 brothers and sisters on her mother's side. There'll be over 100 relatives and family members at that uh, celebration. Um, and if you drove by, at some point, you're going to be like, they're having a heck of a party there <laughs> because that's just the way we are. We're going to have fun. And uh, Alicia would have loved it. And she will be there. Um, and I am going to try very, very hard to always refer to her in the present tense and always check myself when I don't. And I hope the family will remember that. And for other families out there, if your daughter or son or family member, if they're going to the corner store, we're standing in front of a grocery store right now. If they were going down here to buy a bag of potato chips. If they're going to be back in five minutes, say goodbye, hug them, let them know you love them when they walk out the door. You don't know if they're coming back. I saw Alicia a week before she was gone, and I hugged her, told her I love her, told her I'll see you and your mom and the kids and your brother, and we'll all get together for dinner. I would have never thought that would be the last time I saw that girl ever. And you've been listening to Wayne Lang. That is the father of Alicia Greer, one of the victims uh, killed apparently by Boyette expressing relief and gratitude to law enforcement and the community. Mm -hmm. Well, both Boyette and Rice were facing a long list of charges in Northwest Florida. Florida State Attorney Bill Eddins has been on the case since last week. He joins us now live via the telephone. Mr. Eddins, I know you guys have been working so hard to get a hold of this couple and they've been captured. Boyette is dead, but as I understand it, you're okay and eager for him to come to Alabama to face charges. Talk to me more about that. Well, I am because the charge in Alabama is capital murder and the charge in Florida is accessory after the fact to capital murder, which is a lesser charge. I plan to be totally cooperative with the DA in Alabama. Now, if he were to decide for some reason that he would like for us to prosecute our cases first, I'm certainly willing to do that. I have a lot of confidence in the charges in Florida and believe that we will be able to successfully prosecute them uh, one, either before or after the Alabama charges are prosecuted. I'd like to join the father of that victim in saying that I'm relieved and appreciative of the law enforcement efforts throughout Florida, Alabama, and Georgia. Mr. Eddins, do you feel like it you might about run into any I resistance from Rice in coming back to Alabama? Well, generally, when a defendant such as this turns herself in, they cooperate. If, if they do, I would expect that she would be back in Alabama within a week or two at the most. If she doesn't, it'll be several weeks, and we would have to go through the process of asking the governor of Florida 
or the governor of Alabama to send a warrant to the governor of Georgia and then have a hearing and have the judge up there require her to be transported back to Florida. But she'll come back to Florida or Alabama uh, without any significant problems, and where she comes will be determined by the DA in Alabama. Mr. Eddins, we understand that she used her real ID as Mary Rice to check into this motel. Do you have any reason to believe that she was wanting to be caught? No, I don't. The evidence that I'm familiar with based on the investigation that uh, I'm aware of to date indicates that she did everything she could to keep him from being caught. Uh, I wouldn't want to go into detail now about that, but I have substantial evidence to establish that she was, in fact, an accessory and really uh, made no effort to uh, have him be caught. Are you at all surprised that he allowed her to go outside and give herself up instead of... Uh using her as a human shield or even killing the two of them? Well, it, it, these cases are very volatile. I've seen many of them throughout my career, and you can never predict how they will end. I've seen them end this way. I've seen them end with both people dead. I've seen them end uh, with both people in custody. Uh, so you never can tell. It's just a volatile situation with a lot of adrenaline going on. Law enforcement stayed so focused in the Escambia and Santa Rosa County areas. Are you surprised they were able to make it as far as they did into Georgia? No, I'm not uh, at all. I felt that uh, the pressure was put to them so great by local law enforcement that it was not surprising that they left. What was surprising to me was that they stayed here as long as they did and committed as many crimes here as they did. Is there anything else you would like to add? No, thank you very much. I thank you so thank much, you. Bill Eddins, Florida State Attorney. Now, the manhunt is over. Folks in Lower Alabama and Northwest Florida can breathe a sigh of relief. As you heard, Mr. Eddins, he's relieved and the father of one of the victims. It's been a very tense time for everyone in the community, especially Beulah, Florida. Boyette is accused of shooting a woman in a home invasion there just yesterday. Here's News 5's Pat Peterson. We're here in the Beulah area just west of Pensacola in Escambia County, Florida. And as you could probably imagine, a lot of folks that live and work here in this area are glad that this situation has ended. You know, it's been a total nightmare here over the past several days in western Escambia County. Folks locking their doors, afraid to go to work and to school, not sure where Boyette and Rice were. But news of what happened in Georgia spread quickly, and here's what one Beulah resident had to say. We're all, I'm sure everyone is so grateful that they finally caught him. It's been a horrible week for so many people. It's very sad that people had to lose their lives and that poor, poor girl got shot. We'll have more reaction on what happened tonight at 10. Reporting from the Beulah community, Pat Peterson, News 5.